everybody. Welcome to the Off Limits Show. It's uh, Tuesday, January 9th, 2015. And this is your host, Donovan. Thanks for listening. Uh, I appreciate you listening wherever you're listening from, whether you're listening from um, offlimitsshow.com. You can listen to the show live, uh, or you can call into the show there as well. You can also listen to the show on iTunes if you want to subscribe to the podcast there. Also on Spreaker.com and... Um, some other places. <laughs> I can't remember them all. Oh, and of course, iHeartRadio. So thanks for listening, however you're listening, wherever you're listening from. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I've been off for two weeks. I was going to do a show um, <clears throat> on Sunday on my actual birthday, um, but I was, of course, busy the, over the weekend, quite busy. And um, today's the first day I've had time to actually sit down and actually do the show. So I'm doing the show today on being 40. I am now 40 years old, 40 years old. So, <laughs> um, it's interesting how, how that number is such a, um, magical thing in our society, the number 40 and how all the things that, that it means and what comes along with it is just fascinating to me because, um, it is, after all, just a number. It's just a, a, the number of years you've been alive on the earth. And uh, so it's not exactly, um, you know, rocket science or anything or anything really that mystical. Um, but then you th begin to think about it and you begin to realize um, <clears throat> how you yourself have uh, grown and evolved over the course of 40 years of being uh, on this earth. And you begin to realize that there is some significance to being 40 in this, the society and also being gay and being 40. Um, that in and of itself is its own thing, <clears throat> unfortunately. Um, but it is, um, it's not a bad thing to me. Um, I, I, I actually have welcomed being 40 and I'll explain to you why, but I, I, I have uh, welcomed it mainly because I've always been, I've always looked really young, first of all, for my age. I've always looked um, at least five years younger, typically. People think I'm about five years younger than I am um, because I have a very kind of, uh, you know, baby face or whatever, uh, pretty pretty boy face. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I've just, I'm not a um, rugged looking guy. You know, my face is not rugged looking, you know, like, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example, um, you know, like uh, <laughs> uh, Hugh Jackman or or uh, Joe Melling Young, or whatever the fuck his name is from uh, Magic Mike, or, you know, those kind of guys. I don't have a rugged look about me. I have a very kind of boy next door kind of look. And so, <clears throat> and I'm also kind of youthful looking. And I'm a Gemini. Most Geminis also tend to be quite youthful looking. So I think it is, uh, um, as I've always been that way all of my life throughout, you know, um, history. And I have realized and recognized that people tend to attribute certain, uh, things to you, uh, when you look a certain way, of course, that's anyone I think, but when you, when you look boyish or boy next door or whatever, people tend to think you're innocent and sweet and kind and whatever. And, and yeah, I kind of am those things in some way, not really innocent, but, <laughs> but I am kind and I am a sweet guy or whatever, as long as you don't cross me. Right. But other than, other than that, I'm a nice person. And so it's true, but, but it also means they underestimate you. Um, and you know, I feel like I've been underestimated my entire life by people, uh, for being, for looking, um, kind of boyish or, or youthful or young or sweet or innocent or whatever. <clears throat> and it's really annoying because I'm not that innocent and I'm not that, I mean, I'm, I don't know if you could say I'm not nice. I mean, I am nice to people that I love and I like, and I care about, of course, and that are nice and kind to of me. But if you're someone, you know, I guess just like everybody else, if you're an asshole to me, I'm an asshole to you. But I, I do definitely have a duality to my personality where, and I am a very sweet, nice, affable person, uh, until you fuck me over, then I'm the uh, complete opposite of that. So my point is people often underestimate you and it can be a plus and a positive to some degree because people think that you're, you're, you're a pushover or, or they can walk all over you or you're a wallflower and they think that that makes you um, easy to manipulate. And I've never been that. I'm actually just the opposite of that. I'm someone who doesn't like to be told what to do. I'm someone who is very independent in terms of thinking and, and, and doing what I want to do. And I, I just am not that way. So be, living my entire life that way, I've always looked forward to being over 40 
when maybe I would look old enough to be, <laughs> to be respected and us actually be respected enough to, that people would understand that I've lived a life long enough to actually know what the fuck I'm talking about. And so I wanted to talk tonight on tonight's show about some of the things and life lessons I've learned over the past 40 years. Um, you know, I could write a book about this and perhaps I am, uh, <laughs> but I, I just wanted to go through some bullet points of things I, I thought about and thought that I might give as advice to listeners listening, gay, straight, <clears throat> bi, transgender, or otherwise, uh, listening to the show who might be able to garner some sort of, um, some sageness from what my wisdom from what I've learned in life. So, um, here are the things I wrote down. Number one, <laughs> Life is a roller coaster ride. I mean, this is an obvious one to most people, but some people don't actually think about what that means. What I mean by that is that being alive in and of itself is a ride. It's a roller coaster ride. From the very moment we're born, we are inundated by um, <laughs> by different messages from other people and thoughts and ways of thinking and, and almost brainwashing us and, and how we shouldn't shouldn't think. Uh, about life and about uh, who we are, messages telling us who and what we are, what we should be. And, you know, life is full, filled with ups and downs. It's filled with left turns and right turns. It's filled with not knowing what's around the corner. So that's, that's why I say it's like a roller coaster ride. It is a ride. And people often want their lives to be placid and easy. And unfortunately, that's not how life is. It is not a easy ride. Um, it is a, um, a bumpy ride. And as uh, Betty Davis said, you know, and uh, prepare yourself for a bumpy night, she said, but it is a bumpy ride life. And it is a um, something that you have to remember that will always have its ups and downs. So when you're in your deepest doldrums and of darkness and sadness and, and, and loneliness and, and, uh, despair and desolation, when you feel that, um, that sadness that we all go through for one reason or another throughout our lifetime, no one is always happy. And if they are, they're fucking insane or they're complete, they're complete moron. <laughs> um, because it's not a complex individual, a human being, a sentient human being does not have a life filled with happiness hundred percent of the time. It's just not possible unless like, as I said, you're a complete moron. Um, so because that's the, the way it is, you have to recognize when you're in those situations. And I've learned this, you know, throughout my life that there will be a uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. There always is. There's always, when you're down the low point, you're always going to see your fight rise up again and come back to the high point again. It's always ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. And even when life is good, it has its ups and downs. It has its good times. It's bad times. There's an ebb and a flow. It's just, just not a flat, easy thing. So to the, one of the things I would say advice wise is to not expect your life to be easy, not expect it to ever be easy, not expect anything to be easy because primarily, I mean, mostly you'll be disappointed in life. If you do, if you expect your life to be this simple ride, uh, and, and to, to expect that things are going to be handed to you or given to you or to have the sense of entitlement, which, which unfortunately, uh, it seems to be a huge um, problem in the millennial generation these days. And, and to some degree, the generation X that I'm part of, but uh, X, Y, and X, Y, and uh, Z or millennial generation, they are all sort of um, <clears throat> mostly the Y's and the Z's <laughs> are very, have a huge sense of entitlement that they should just get what they want to get in life. And no matter what, it should just come to them because they are here and it's a sad and hard wake up call when you recognize in your twenties and your thirties, whenever you recognize it, or if you're in your forties, if you're too late to recognize it, um, that life is, doesn't owe you fucking a fucking thing. People in this world are out for themselves. All of us are, we're out to make our own lives happy and, and to succeed in whatever it is we're doing. And no one is looking out for you, but you. Even when it comes to your parents, your friends, your lovers, whatever, there's always going to be, the, in the end, just yourself. So, And that's the other thing I was going to say is that in the end, the, the point two is going to be that um, ultimately we're all just alone. It's just us by ourselves. Um, we are... Um, you know, in the end, you're all that you have. Your parents die, your friends go away, lovers leave, 
you know, pets don't live forever. And you, you have to realize sooner or later that in the end, it is just you that you have to depend on in this world. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing is permanent. Everything dies. Everything goes away. Everything has an ending. That is the, um, that is, that is the essence of life. Be, that is that it has an ending, that it dies. And that's why it's precious. And that's why while we're here, we have to remember to appreciate those things. Every single moment that you have with friends, with family, with loved ones, with, with whomever it may be, you have to remember to really be present in those moments. And it's often so difficult for us to do that because we get so busy in our hectic lives uh, that we forget to do that. We forget to actually appreciate the things that we have and to actually be present and live in the moment. It is so important to smell the roses. It is so important to just stop and appreciate that gorgeous sunset or vista or uh, ocean or just feel your feet in the sand or just to meditate and be present with yourself for a moment. And I know this all sounds so Zen and, and new agey, but it is true. It is true. And I've learned this because I, I, I have had a consciousness about myself since I was probably my early, late teens, early twenties that, you know, I remember driving down the road one time. I mean, I have a really long memory. I don't, I'm not sure I've told you that on the show before. My memory is very long. I remember the weirdest things and, um, I don't know why, but I have a very, very good long memory, long-term memory. And I remember driving down the road coming from a boyfriend's house. I was with at the time when I was 21, I think 2021. And, uh, I was working in a job I liked. I was uh, in college. I had a boyfriend I loved or liked anyway. Uh, I had peace with my family. I was, uh, I had good friendships. I, I had everything I ever wanted. And I recognized in that exact moment driving down the road, I can remember this as a night thinking to myself, wow, I have everything I want. I have a reason to be happy. And I sat there, I mean, in the car on the way home, um, appreciative of what I had at that time in my life. And I knew and even said to myself, well, it won't last, but I'm going to appreciate it while it does. And it lasted for probably another two weeks before I found out the guy I was dating was, had cheated on me. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, I was, I was, um, I was happy for that, that moment. And so my point is to take the time to appreciate the things you have when you have them and to actually, um, live in the moment because it's so important that we do. The other thing I was going to say, another thing is that, um, is that, you know, I'm not as no, as old as, as 40 sounds and, and I'm not as young as I thought I was, you know? So if 40 is weird because you are, you know, officially at the end of your youth or whatever, I don't know who determined when your youth ends, but, um, in terms of the lifespan of most human beings, most human beings, most males live to their eighties or so on average. So that would be mean. I'm in my mid, the very middle of my life. I've lived half my life and 